we're going to be doing push up and up draft today talking about pressure air pressure water pressure gravity i'm going to start with our bible connection this was a really important week we're talking about something that's invisible and so i felt like we had a really strong bible connection this week some people believe that being a christian and believing in science can't go hand in hand. They make you choose, either believe in God or believe in science. Some people believe that if you can't see something that it must not exist. Um, consider this Bible text from Job who we know through all of his trials still continued to put his faith in God. For he views the ends of the earth and he sees everything under the heavens. When he established the force of the wind and measured out the waters, when he made a decree for the rain and a path for the thunderstorm, then he looked at wisdom and appraised it. He confirmed it and tested it. Job 28, 24 through 27. God is the ultimate scientist. He's the creator. He tested his wisdom and he's a part of the scientific method. He established the force of the wind, he measured the waters, he tested it, and God saw that all he had made was good. So today we're going to talk about an invisible force that's all around us. We can't see it, but it exists, just like faith. Its strength controls our weather. Even though we can't see it, we are surrounded by it and we depend on it. We have to have it to live. Its tiny molecules are all around us and they have a lot of weight when they are put together. And it's air. So let's consider our experiment materials. We're gonna be filling the container up three fourths full with water and we'll have a cup. I'll also be providing towels to put down on the tables so that we don't get water on the tables that we're borrowing. Um, our last material is air. Air is going to be pushing the water in our bowl down. This is air pressure and gravity. If we were in space where there was no air and zero gravity, the water would actually be floating out of the bowl. So of course, since we aren't in space, here on Earth, the gravity is actually pulling the water down into the bowl like a magnet. So I will have those really neat pictures of the water bubbles in space there in the binder for the students to see so that they can actually have a visual of how the gravity and air pressure on Earth is keeping the water in a bowl, which is something we just take for granted because we are not astronauts. All right, so questions that you can ask the students while you're getting the activity set up. Can you see or feel air? Can you taste it, touch it, or smell it? I actually found some interesting answers to this that I did not know. Pure air has no discernible scent and no color. However, it can contain dust or pollen, which can give it color or a scent. The smell of rain is actually a chemical reaction between plant oils and bacteria in the soil. And when they get wet, it releases that smell of rain that we're all used to smelling once, you know, we get a nice spring rain, summer rain. And then um, there'll be some more in-depth questions for the older students. Do you know what air is made out of? Um, primarily nitrogen, carbon dioxide, argon, water vapor, and oxygen, of course. So we're going to take our cup and we're going to set it on its side. So while the glass is submerged, we're just going to flip it with the mouth down, okay? If you wanna ask your students questions, this is a good time to ask them what they think will happen. Now, while the glass is under the water, I'm going to start slowly lifting it all the way up until there's only about an inch of the cup's mouth still under the water. Now, due to pressure, you can see this cup is still full of water. And 
we will go into the nitty gritty of why that is in just a minute. Now, if you bring it up too high, the pressure, of course, will then release and the water will come out. All right, so now that you've seen the experiment, we're gonna ask the students, what do you think is gonna happen when we start to lift the cup up out of the water? Is it going to get heavier? Is it going to get lighter? What happens if we lift it all the way out of the bowl? Um, will the glass fill up with air or water when we lift it out? So a lot of different things to get their minds thinking, why is this cup holding water and what is gonna happen when the pressure breaks? So then we'll discuss what happened even though it doesn't feel like it, there is air pressure constantly around us. You know, when your ears pop when you go up in an airplane, that's due to air pressure. Everything is affected by an unseen pressure, air pressure, gravity. So due to the pressure on all sides of the cup, the water stays inside. It has no option to escape. So it is plugged by the water on the bottom, and it has a finite amount of air in the top. So as we're pulling it out, the pressure prevents the water from coming out or from air from going in. Now, when the pressure seal is broken, when that cup hits the water line, the air comes rushing into the cup as gravity pulls the water out of the cup. It equalizes the pressure. This is very similar to when you're in an airplane and your ears pop when you're going up or when you're coming back down. Now, the reason behind why your ears pop is an actual change in the atmospheric pressure. The pressure in your eardrums changes and so there is a pop that you feel because the air pressure changes in your ear when you are going up to an altitude where there is less air pressure or you're coming back down to earth where there's more air pressure. All right, so moving on to experiment number two, which is updraft. We have established what air pressure is, and now we're going to determine the effect that the surrounding temperature has on air movement. So we've established that the air moves around us all the time and at different pressures. The next factor we're looking at is heat. So to set up the experiment, we will ask the students what do they think will happen when we hang this spiral tissue paper over the lamp when the lamp is turned on. You can start by hanging it over the lamp with the lamp off and then taking the tissue paper away, turning the lamp on, let it heat up for a minute while you discuss, and then hang it over. I guarantee that one of your students will theorize that the tissue paper will catch on fire. So remember to not touch the tissue paper to the light bulb or you may prove their hypothesis correct. So observe and then ask, why does the lamp cause the tissue paper to move? So my hand keeps moving and I can't tell if the spiraling is because of my hand, the air movements or the lamp. So I have now hung it on this lamp and I'm going to put the light underneath it. There we go. So when I move the lamp up, you can see the spirals start to happen. When I move the lamp back down, let's see. There. What is happening is as the hot air is moving up, cool air is coming back down and taking its place. This is gonna be a very finicky science experiment. This is a spinning tea light and it is going to demonstrate much better than the twirling paper how the hot air as it goes up causes things to move and then the cool air rushing down below. So much better than the twirling paper. 
So the nitty gritty of this. The energy from the light bulb heats up the air around it. The air molecules are moving really, really fast around the light bulb. Um, the reason this is called updraft. The warm air molecules are moving up moving the paper and at the same time cool air is rushing down underneath so there is a constant air cycle so you have really really fast hot air molecules moving up cool air coming in to take the place so an easy way to explain this to your students is to ask them to think of it like a yo-yo so cool air is going to rush in where the hot air is moving up. So here goes our cool air rushing down. Y'all, I cannot yo-yo. Okay. The cool air is going to rush in as the yo-yo goes down. As the warm air starts to rise, your yo-yo is rising up. Whoosh, yo-yo goes down, cool air rushing in to take the place. So as long as the lamp is on and it is producing warm air, the cooler air will continue to rush in and take its place. So this is a yo-yo of air movement, all right, called convection currents. Over and over and over again, the hot air goes up, the cool air comes down to take its place. So here's the real life application for this. Why are we talking about lamps? Why are we talking about light bulbs moving paper? You've probably heard the terms high pressure system and low pressure system. A high pressure system clears away the clouds. These are our sunny, warm, beautiful days in Georgia. A low pressure system has cool air coming in. So this is when the cool air comes down and takes the place of the nice sunny, high pressure, beautiful sunny day. Low pressure system, cool air rushes in, creates clouds, water vapor, rain. Usually these are yo-yoed together. When you see a weather report, you typically are gonna see a low pressure system followed by a high pressure system followed by a low pressure system behind it. So going back to the very beginning of this video, we know it exists, air, air pressure, tiny air molecules control basically everything that we need to exist. The air that we breathe, the weather that we have, the rain that grows our food. Air pressure, even though it is invisible, even though we have to have faith to know that it is there, gives us existence, gives us life, and is something that we have faith will be there tomorrow.